So here we are back in the Lake District and uh, as is typical in the Lake District today it is overcast and uh, drizzly which is uh, the Lake District we know and love. Bit of a departure from what I had on the last couple of vlogs in Norway but uh, but I love it all the same. Uh, today's shoot, now I've actually been here a couple of days ago and uh, was tilting at this little windmill behind me. Uh, this is the spot that I've I've been to a lot of times over the years, but I've not actually shot it in uh, in a good amount of time. It's one that I tend to bring workshop clients to when we've got conditions like we've got today. Now, a couple of days ago, as I say, I tried to shoot this, and I filmed it all, and I'll you know I can show you a bit here of what I was doing. But when I got back and reflected on it, really, and I know better to be honest, because I've done this for far too long, the conditions just weren't right for this shot. Um, so this is definitely one of those locations, I think, where it suits overcast, uh, moodier sort of conditions, which we've got today. So, right, I'm gonna get over there and talk you through what I'm doing, and uh, hopefully we can make it work this time. So while I'm waiting around here for the weather gods to play a ball, it uh, gives me a, bit, a good chance to talk you through why the shot that I was taking a couple of days ago didn't work. Uh, the problem I had was that because we were shooting at sunrise, and really I should have known better to be honest, is that the main subject, uh, where it is in relation to where the sun's coming up, was always going to be in deep shadow. And the problem I had was that we had nice soft light in the mid and far distance but then we had a big dark area around the main subject. So even though the shot itself looked, you know, reasonably okay, it wasn't what I was after. So really, I mean, when I'm doing long exposure work, especially around big bodies of water, what I'm always looking for really is, is flat conditions because I don't want patches of bright and, and dark on the water to distract your eye from the main subject, which is obviously, in this case, the sapling. And at the moment, We've got patchy clouds, so the light's hitting different parts of the water. So, uh, so I'm going to wait this out, and hopefully we'll get a nice, uh, nice flat bit of light, and the water, uh, the light on the water rather, will be nice and even. One of the other things that um, is more of a finicky thing, to be honest, and, and most people might look at this and not even see it as an issue, but the mere fact that we had a reflection uh, a couple of days ago meant that the where I had to put the tripod basically to get the right perspective meant that the sapling was too low down in the frame as well because I had to accommodate that line of the reflection and make sure that they were separated from each other. Today, because the water's a bit more choppy, it allows me a bit more freedom to get a bit lower down to the, the tree and get it better placed in the frame. So, uh, so yeah, typical lakes, you know, you, uh, you want overcast flat conditions and uh, the moment you get set up, the sun comes out. So right, I'm going to wait this out and uh, hopefully we get a nice bit of cloud cover and some flat light. Okay, I think after an hour and a half of waiting here off the camera, I think this is going to be about as good as I'm going to get. It is actually getting even brighter now, as you can see the light bouncing off my head here. Uh, I was saying about the sunshine before, I don't actually mind the sunshine, it's the, it's the patchy clouds that are the issue. And even though it's bright now, we have actually got nice even light. So uh, it's not quite what I came for. I'd have preferred much more overcast conditions, but, uh, but that's what we've got. So uh, I'm gonna take a few shots here and hopefully one of them might work. I don't think they're gonna win any awards by any stretch of these shots, but uh, one to come back for on a better day, I think. Uh, in terms of the shot itself, I'm at about 55 millimeter. Uh, because it's bright and I've got the 10 stop on, I'm still only getting about a minute, even when I close the aperture down to f16. Now I could put on another filter because these uh, case magnetic ones stack, but really if the exposure starts going into three and four minutes, it's not gonna make a whole lot of difference to how the, the image actually looks. The water's just gonna be smooth, whatever I do. So I'm finding about a minute is the sweet spot. Um, so I'll pop these on the screen, let me know what you think. And uh, yeah, not a bad morning. Nice to be back in the lakes.
So that shoe right there is probably the case 95% of the time in all our landscape photography. And it really is just a case of just doing what you can with the conditions that you have on the day. Here I am back out at Lowe's Water where I had a little bit more success on this shoot, so do stay to the end to see the results of this. But before that, just a quick word on successes and failures in landscape photography. So a tricky shoot that one, and typical of the lot of a landscape photographer. And uh, it's important, I think, to, to show both sides of the coin because if you do this long enough, any good landscape photographer, experienced landscape photographer will tell you that a lot of this is a numbers game and you're going to have far, far more failures than you are successes. Now, the title of the video is to do with success and failure and when I'm using those terms, I'm not really comfortable with it, to be honest, because success and failure implies that there's a, there's a black and white nature to it when, for me, I think it's important to keep... A balanced perspective on things uh, you know you go out in those sort of conditions that I was just showing you earlier and it doesn't really come off is it a failure does it make me a bad photographer well no obviously just things didn't line up on the day conversely if I go out in absolutely amazing conditions and everything's doing exactly what I want does it make me an amazing photographer no you need to you need to keep some balance in there and, and some perspective and it's important to not look at those things as just success and failure because if you do, you'll end up going down a bit of a rabbit hole of this emotional roller coaster that just, you know, you go from these huge peaks to horrible troughs and there's nothing in between. And then you'll end up, you know, lurching from periods of, you know, real despair and I hate my photography to, you know, oh, I love it and it's the best thing since sliced bread. I think it's it's important to just keep on an even keel a little bit. And what I've found over the years doing this is that, you know, if I'm not inspired and I'm not really feeling it, I'm quite happy to take a little break from things. I've got that perspective now through experience that there's always another sunrise, there's always another sunset. Things aren't quite as important as you think they are in the moment. So, yeah, success and failure, try not to treat them as, as a sort of black and white uh, perspective. I, uh, I go back to a quote actually. This is, I mean, I don't talk deep and meaningful philosophy on here, but uh, back when I was touring the country playing badminton years ago in my teenage years, a lot of high level competition for five, six years. Um, my coach gave me, a, he, he gave me a quote and I don't know what, it must have been effective because it stuck in my head all these years. I think it was a Rudyard Kipling uh, quote. And I'll put it on the bottom of the screen here because I can't exactly remember it verbatim, but it was along the lines of if you can treat success and failure as the same imposter, then you'll you'll have balance in your life or something like that. And I think that's that's key in landscape photography is just keeping on an even keel with things. Um, so you don't go through those those peaks and troughs and it keeps the motivation at a good level all the time rather than going into those depths of despair and not wanting to go out with the camera. Um, yeah, I think that's really important anyway. But right, we're gonna get over and do some shooting down here at Lowe's Water because the conditions are pretty nice. That's a bit better, I can see myself now. Uh, the light has got really harsh, um, really quickly. Coming into that time of year, that uh, you know your, your window for really good light is, uh, is really quite small. And it caught me out a bit there because the last time I shot here, it must have been earlier in the, the year than this because the, the tree on the corner there where the reeds are, I remember shooting it years ago and I, I remember the light hitting it a little bit later, whereas, um, you know, it's caught me out there in that it's hit it full beam very quickly. And 
as a result of that, my window for getting the shots in was pretty small there. I'd be lucky if it was 15 minutes. So I'm just having to talk you through after the fact what I was doing because uh, trying to do the shooting and the video there would have been an absolute nightmare. Um, but all the shots I was taking were between 40 and 80 millimeter on the 24 to 200, just varying the composition on the focal lengths. Um, what I was finding is that uh, as the sun got up and the light got harsher, I was having to just move the composition round to the right a bit more just to get rid of the left-hand side of the frame because the light was just way too harsh over there and it would have been a bit distracting. Um, but that little bit of mist that uh, we got across the uh, lake, well, still got it now actually, but um, as I say, the light's too harsh. Uh, that little bit of mist was absolutely lovely. Uh, but it was a bit of a punk coming out this morning because even though we've had clear skies overnight and the temperatures dropped, uh, I wasn't expecting loads of mist because there isn't really enough humidity, but uh, that little bit of soft mist there on the, uh, on the surface of the water was uh, a nice bonus. Um, but I've just spotted something in the wood there that I'm just going to have a little explore with. Uh, I don't think I'm going to film it because I don't think it'll really come to anything, but I'm going to just have a little mosey along the shoreline now and have a little scout for, for future visits. Uh, but hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Keep liking and subscribing. And uh, hopefully you've found this little spiel about success and failure useful. And uh, I'll catch you on the next one.